This is a homage beat. Twenty eighteen was a big year for Astro, both AMD and Intel chipset launches, and of course the entrance of the brand into the graphics cards market, being exclusive to the AMD graphics cards models. This is the Astro RX 580 Phantom Gaming X 8GB OC edition. Yes, quite a long name, however. This graphics card is one of the cheapest RX 580 implementations available on the market right now, but don't mistake a low price with low quality because this video card follows the same quality as the high-end Astro motherboards available right now for both Intel and AMD sockets. The overall design of this video card is subtle yet stylish with no RGB lighting and over-the-top graphics. This card is all about quality and performance at a good price. The cooling system is simple, having just two 85mm fans that use a double ball bearing design. These are rated at more than 100,000 hours of usage and provide plenty of airflow to the heatsink underneath. There is no backplate to cover the backside of the graphics cards and to help prevent sagging, but to better explain this new, this new video card, the heatsink must be removed and this means avoiding some warranties. The heatsink itself makes contact with the graphics chip surface through a layer of thermal compound, while both the memory chips and the power delivery system make contact through thermal pads. But enough with the visuals of the cooling system, let's have it tested and see the actual functionality of this graphics card. And of course, this means starting with the two 85mm fans and a well-placed microphone. And this is how the fans perform under load. Starting at around 50% speed, the fans will begin to increase in volume. However, the main issue of these graphics cards are the fan profiles pre-installed that are set up in such a way that when playing, for example, a game such as The Witcher 3 Will Hunt, the fans were already running at around 70% of their speed and thus making quite a lot of noise. Moving on, A-Stroke also provides their own overclocking software called Phantom Gaming Tweak. This offers all the basic settings of a graphics card, including the power limit, memory and core frequency as well as the voltages. This software also contains the pre-installed profiles of the graphics cards, including the overclocking mode that increases both the core frequency and memory, as well as having a in-depth fan profile configuration. Now let's talk about the actual gaming performance of these graphics cards, starting with Deus Ex Mankind divided in DirectX 12 mode, with vertical sync disabled and of course the ultra preset enabled. Due to the lack of previous graphics cards to be tested in this format, the a RX 580 is compared with a single Founders Edition GTX 1070. And of course I I'm using the average and the low 1% and low 0.1% frame times to better represent the performance of the graphics cards in the actual gameplay of each game. In GTA 5, the RX 580 is left behind by the GTX 1070, the 580 presenting more delay between frames and thus the common shutter occurs. However, both graphics cards offer a good gameplay experience in GTA 5 and with some tweaking, the RX 580 performs great for its price point. The Witcher 3 will hunt its best games to be used for benchmarking the game engine offering consistent results for multiple GPU and graphics cards configurations. In our case, the differences between the A-Stroke RX 580 and the GTX 1070 is 20% on average. Just like in the case of the GTA 5, the low score in the 0.1% comes from the, a delay between frames, in the case of the RX 580. This happened when the game was rendering highly populated areas or dense lightning scenes. However, don't let this put you off the RX 580 because the overall gameplay experience was good. And what about the power consumption of the Astro Phantom Gaming? Well, at peak gaming, the graphics cards will use around 183 watts, while in a synthetic benchmark, the video card will peak at around 202 watts. The idle power consumption is good, standing at around 8 watts. In terms of overclocking, the A-Stroke Phantom Gaming RX 580 managed to, to, to achieve a steady 1520MHz on the graphics core and 2250MHz on the memory. The overall performance gain is around 6.7%. As a conclusion for these graphics cards from a newcomer into the discrete video card market, all I can say is that this is a very good graphics card that offers good value for its retail price. In order to achieve such lower price, A-Stroke 
had made the choice of not including a backplate and using a simpler cooling system that features just three heat pipes. This, uh, this is also the reason for the loud fan profile pre-installed. The overall performance in gaming is good, the RX 580 being at around the same level as a GTX 1060. My experience with the RX 580 Phantom Gaming was excellent in both games and synthetic benchmarks. Sure, the fans will get loud when the video card is under load, but that is a compromise that we, uh, we can all make if this means that we can have a cheaper graphics cards with a good build quality from a new manufacturer. I will gladly recommend this version of the RX 580 to anyone that is into the market of buying an affordable AMD graphics cards, and I will take the evolution of Astroke as a brand as a proof that their graphics cards will get even better with time and with new models.